In this video, I will address a question that might have crossed your minds. Windows, Windows or Mac? Mac? This question has probably come with you while buying a computer for the first time, and the opinions from both sides might have confused you? That's why I believe this video will be incredibly helpful for anyone looking to buy a new laptop. Both platforms have their own limitations when measured against their competitors. That's why it's essential to grasp the good and bad between them, even if just a little. If you're ready, let's dive in and begin this journey together. Without understanding what makes Windows and Mac devices excel at specific tasks, you might find yourself disappointed with your choice. For example, why might choosing a Mac for 3D modeling and rendering lead to frustration? Or if battery life and portability matter deeply to you, why might Windows not be the ideal choice? Which one stands out as the best choice for coding and application development? Which one offers the highest performance in the low-budget range? What platform best for photo and video editing? Your experience with these matters will be influenced by critical factors such as design, performance, and ecosystem. So if you're ready, let's begin with design. Number 1. Design if you've noticed MacBooks in stores or online, you've likely observed their stylish and premium design. Apple places as much focus on design as it does on performance, which is evident across all price ranges. While this is part of Apple's marketing and brand strategy, it also offers notable advantages. Apple products come with well-calibrated screens and speakers, enhancing your work experience, particularly in areas like photo and video editing where Apple has a distinct advantage. In summary, MacBook's high-screen color gamut makes them a superior choice for visually-based Apple applications, while their excellent speaker quality enhances sound-based tasks. Additionally, their portability offers a significant advantage, and the lack of need for extra hardware adds considerable convenience. However, one downside to Apple products is their generally higher price compared to competitors. While this might not be a major issue on its own, the inability to upgrade components like RAM and SSD later can limit their potential for handling various workloads. If you're not aware of this, it could affect your experience negatively. For instance, purchasing a MacBook Pro with only 8GB of RAM for mid- to high-level editing might lead to performance issues. During editing or rendering, your device's performance might fall short. Upgrading the RAM could improve performance, but as mentioned earlier, MacBook RAM cannot be upgraded. To address this, you would need to purchase a MacBook with 16GB or more of RAM. However, keep in mind that the higher storage and memory options come at a premium compared to competitors. On the other hand, while most Windows laptops may not have the same level of design appeal as MacBooks, this is not due to inherent inferiority. In the Windows ecosystem, multiple manufacturers compete to deliver the highest performance at the lowest price. This focus on function and performance over design and aesthetics. That's why many Windows laptop models lack the design consistency and refinement that is found in MacBooks. The main advantage of Windows laptops is that they can deliver similar performance at a lower price. However, in achieving these performance levels, they might fall short in other aspects affecting user experience, such as screen and speaker quality. Additionally, Windows laptops offer greater flexibility in design. As mentioned earlier, when purchasing a MacBook, you need to choose your memory and storage options up front because MacBooks do not support hardware upgrades. In contrast, Windows laptops offer the advantage of adding extra RAM and SSD later, much like you would with a desktop system. This flexibility can be beneficial depending on your budget or expected product lifespan, as Windows laptops are generally easier to repair and upgrade compared to MacBooks. But if you're planning to build a desktop system, Windows is a better choice than Mac because the x86 architecture used by Windows is more suited for desktops. The ARM architecture found in MacBooks and iMacs doesn't fully leverage the desktop form factor. Regarding screen and sound quality, it's important to know the exact specifications. MacBooks Retina displays generally have color gamut values of at least 80% in color spaces like Adobe RGB, DCI-P3, and NTSC, ensuring vivid and accurate colors on the screen. However, a Windows laptop with similar specifications can perform just as well as a MacBook. The issue with Windows laptops is that they may not always come with the high-quality display panels that are advertised. This happens because manufacturers aim to meet diverse user demands while keeping costs down. As a result, a Windows laptop might offer two variations, one with a high refresh rate for better gaming and another with a high resolution and well-calibrated display for superior content creation. It's worth noting that recent Windows laptops have made significant progress in this area over the past three years. Display options are now more uniform than ever. Similarly, MacBook speakers deliver a broad frequency range from 20 Hz to 20 kHz at a consistent level, 
The key factor in sound quality is a flat frequency response. As long as the speaker measurements on a Windows laptop are close to those of a MacBook, you can achieve comparable sound performance. And the good news is that, as of 2024, manufacturers have started paying the same level of attention to sound quality as they do to screens. Many models competing with MacBooks now feature speakers with a flat frequency response. This development allows Windows laptops to perform on par with MacBooks in various areas, particularly in music production. The progress in both screen and sound Sound quality means Windows laptops are increasingly matching MacBooks, marking a significant advancement. Number 2. Performance In this section, we'll primarily assess performance based on 3D modeling, gaming, and 4K video editing, as these are some of the most demanding tasks for a computer. Additionally, we'll cover web design, coding, and application development, as specific details in these areas often take precedence over laptop performance. Both platforms offer sufficient features for tasks like application development and coding. The best choice for you depends on the programming language you're using and the platform your colleagues are working with. Even though both platforms are capable, using a Mac for a Windows-based project or a Windows device for a Mac-based project can present some challenges. Regardless of your preferences, consider using the platform that your colleagues are working with, as consistency in group projects is crucial for achieving optimal results. On the other hand, for web design, macOS is a better option because it is built on Unix, which is the foundation for web design, and MacBooks offer excellent compatibility in this area. Number 3. Ecosystem by ecosystem, we refer to the way your laptop interacts seamlessly with other devices you own, such as another laptop, tablet, smartphone, smartwatch, sound system, and more, to enhance your user experience. This includes applications designed to work together across these devices, allowing you to access saved data, control other devices, and enjoy a unified experience. And the only platform that fully embodies these features is Apple's ecosystem. Integration across Apple products is a core part of Apple's business strategy, driving the company to offer useful features like handoff, which lets you start an activity on one device and seamlessly continue it on another. AirDrop is a feature that lets you send files to nearby Apple devices without needing to change any settings. iCloud synchronization also keeps your photos, documents, notes, and other data consistent across devices. Similar features are available in Microsoft Office programs on both mobile and Windows versions. However, Features like Universal Clipboard, which allows you to copy content on one device and paste it on another, are currently exclusive to Apple devices. Essentially, Apple's ecosystem can be described as a collection of devices that function effectively on their own but offer enhanced options and features when paired with other Apple devices, whether they belong to you or someone else. In the past, Microsoft offered similar features such as optimizing Photos documents in OneDrive which was introduced along with AirDrop in iCloud. However, Microsoft's mobile platform struggled to gain traction due to its business strategy and insufficient developer support, which led to a lack of user reliance. In recent years, collaboration between Microsoft and Android device manufacturers such as Samsung has been increasing. Both Microsoft and Google are working on ecosystem integration similar to what was seen with Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1. Now, let's move on to the most challenging topic. 3D modeling. In 3D modeling, an object's three-dimensional representation is initially designed within various to D parameter ranges and then rendered using variables such as material, texture, and light to produce the visual output of a 3D model. Render engines are essential. Historically, render engines relied solely on the computer's processor, but today they can utilize external graphics cards to achieve faster rendering rates. So, when rendering 3D images, the performance of the graphics card is crucial. Graphics cards have a larger number of parallel cores and faster RAM modules compared to processors, allowing them to process project data more quickly. If you compare render times of GPUs and Macs with those on Windows systems, you'll understand why I don't recommend Macs for 3D rendering. The primary reason MacBooks lag behind in this area compared to Windows is their lack of support for dedicated external graphics cards, both in terms of platform and design. Instead, MacBooks rely on integrated graphics within their CPUs, which provide slightly inferior performance compared to the dedicated external graphics cards found in Windows laptops due to these design limitations. Another factor contributing to Macs lagging behind is the difference in architecture between Apple's M-series processors and those in Windows laptops. Rendering engines are optimized for the x86 architecture, which supports 
external graphics cards and has no power limitations. For now, it's important to know that Apple's M-series processors use ARM architecture and rendering engines have not yet been adequately optimized for this architecture, leading to less effective performance. Even though their integrated graphics cards are quite capable, the same issues apply to gaming. While M-series processors can technically handle mid-range games, the lack of software optimization hinders their performance. In these areas, the difference between Windows and Mac extends beyond just the operating system. Windows uses the x86 architecture, which excels in handling high-level tasks that require processing large amounts of data without power limitations. This architecture manages complex tasks by distributing the workload between the processor and the graphics card, and it can utilize external graphics cards or multiple RAM slots to boost performance. In contrast, since 2020, Macintosh has shifted to ARM architecture, which focuses on low-power consumption. ARM architecture emphasizes software optimization for task processing rather than relying solely on the processor and graphics card hard for specific tasks. By breaking tasks into smaller parts, ARM architecture consumes less energy, making it more efficient for portable devices like smartphones. However, ARM does not support external graphics cards or additional RAM slots. ARM processors are designed with fixed memory and storage modules tailored to the software they will run, leaving no room for upgrades. As a result, in devices like the new MacBooks with ARM processors, you can upgrade components such as RAM. Rendering engines perform better on Windows partly because software is optimized for the x86 architecture which Windows predominantly uses. While these programs can technically run on the ARM architecture used by macOS, optimization issues prevent them from delivering the same level of performance as on Windows. However, this is the current situation, and if modeling programs are optimized for ARM architecture in the future, the performance landscape could shift in favor of MacBooks. 4K video editing is an area where both platforms have strong edge. For this task, you need a fast CPU, a powerful GPU, ample RAM, and well-optimized software. While video editing is similar to 3D modeling, you might find that x86 architecture's power isn't as crucial for handling video clips, audio, and music. ARM and Macs can perform just as well as Windows in this context, and in some cases, they might even offer slightly better performance. Additionally, Macs offer benefits such as long battery life and a lighter form factor. Both platforms will provide a good experience for video editing. Windows devices support most video editing programs and offer features like extra RAM slots to boost performance. Nonetheless, one of the key advantages of MacBooks, as previously mentioned, is that M-series processors can handle relatively lightweight tasks with comparable speed to their Windows counterparts. This makes MacBooks a great choice for those who travel frequently or need mobility for their work. They allow you to achieve high performance without being tethered to a power outlet. Similarly, most photo editing and digital drawing programs, such as Photoshop, Lightroom, and After Effects work well on both platforms. However, on Mac, you can benefit from lightweight operation without experiencing performance losses. On the other hand, if you're into music production with programs like FL Studio or Logic Pro, you'll need a powerful processor and good battery life, making the MacBook a solid choice. All right, let's wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If not, feel free to leave a thumbs down. Stay tuned for the next video. And until then, take care and goodbye.